Hello again, I'm Matthew from TheWetPen.com, and even though I said that the previous video that I made was my final one in the Japanese series, I still have a little cleanup to do. Those of you who are really on top of things may have noticed that my ink bottle count between the first video and the last didn't add up to the 32 that I promised. In fact, during my first week in Japan, I bought three more bottles of ink that I skipped in the initial video because they were not store exclusives. These are those inks. These are Kuretake Ink Cafe inks, which I had never seen before when I ran across them in an Etoya near Shinjuku Station in Tokyo. And thinking that they were only sold in Japan and it was early in my trip, I bought three. I eventually got back to my hotel that evening and found that they were actually available in the US. Now you can even buy them on Amazon for $16, for example although they were less expensive in Japan. Anyway, one of the reasons that I bought them was that the particular line of ink is called Meiji no Iro. It's more obvious on the labels that are made for sale in the US and on the info sheets that come with them. Meiji was the emperor of Japan from 1868 to 1912, which overlapped the late Victorian era in the West. So the theme of these inks is colors of the Meiji era. And on my first day in Japan, after visiting Kingdom Note, I had spent the afternoon walking around the Meiji Jingu near Shibuya, which is a huge Shinto shrine and park dedicated to the Emperor Meiji and his wife. So even though they broke my rules, these inks were still meaningful to me, so I'm glad I got them. and. Since I need to swatch them anyway, I thought I'd show you what they look like. Let me start with Shikon, which is purple. The information in the box says, Meiji era is also called the purple era because purple or light purple was often used in women's clothing as a chic color. I'm going to swatch this on my color ring on plain white rhodia on Irofol, which is slightly warm, and on Midori, which is ivory. Oh wow, this is darker than I expected, but it's really smooth going onto the paper. I'll let this dry. And as you might expect with a saturated purple, we get lots of greenish sheen. There's even some on the Rhodia, which doesn't normally sheen at all and the Midori is the heaviest. Next, this one is called Kujaku Ryoku. The documentation with the ink says that it was introduced by the West during the Meiji era, and it's a bright bluish green like the color found in peacock feathers, which have been loved in Japan since ancient times. And yes, that's pretty much what we see here. A nice teal with beautiful dark shading. When it's completely dry, there is just a touch of magenta sheen on the Japanese papers. My third color was Shimbashi Iro, which the info sheet describes as a new color in Japan at the time as the result of the creation of chemical dyes. It's a bright greenish blue that was popular among the geisha in the Shimbashi district of Tokyo because it was fashionable and trendy. This is a popular ink color, but this is a fine example of it. Nice and saturated with good depth and variation we see just a little bit of magenta sheen in the heaviest areas. And as long as I'm here, this is the one that I showed you earlier with the Roman characters on the label, which I ordered from Amazon just last week. 
This one is Kuro Gane Iro, which the box says became popular in the late Meiji era, and they call it a dark, dull, bluish green that was used for store clerk aprons. And it is dark. It's so dark here that it's hard to see the color. This almost just looks black. I'm going to try to make some kind of a swatch with this ink as thin as I can get it so that it's easier to see the color on camera. This paper is Regalia from Endless Stationery. And there we go. This is nice and thin and we can really see that dull green. I actually really like this one too. And it's dark enough to be usable at work. It'll mostly just look like black ink, I suspect. I put a link to these inks on Amazon down below if you want to order them and support my channel at the same time. So that's it for ink, but I also bought some paper while I was in Japan, and I thought I might as well show it to you too. First, in Tokyo, I bought this Kuratake campus notebook. This cost about four or five dollars, I think. It was not expensive. And I'm always on the lookout for good A5 sized notebooks with white paper that will perform well enough for me at a low price. And I thought this might do the trick. I haven't tested it yet though, so I'm going to do a couple of quick tests here. First of all, I wanna see how well it controls feathering. And to test that, I'm going to use Noodler's Base State Blue. I'll write just a few words here with a glass dip pen. And there's a little bit of feathering. That's too bad. But it might still be worth using if it'll give me some sheen with sheening inks. I'll start with Colorverse Supernova, which always gives me some decent sheen. Yikes, that's really feathering. And there's no sheen. Okay, well, that was worth a shot, but it's not the paper I was looking for. I have shown you the fish notebooks that I bought at the Ginza Itoya in Tokyo, and I still love them. And I also got this little CD notebook in Osaka at Giftionary Delta, just because it wasn't very expensive, and I have a thicker, heavier version of the same thing that I didn't want to mess up with ink tests. So I can use this little guy for testing purposes. In Kyoto, at the tag stationery shop where I bought my Fushimi red ink, I also bought this beautiful green and gray notebook with a traditional Japanese binding. When I was visiting Himeji Castle, one of the museum displays was a set of traditionally bound notebooks that listed the samurai family names in the region and I decided that I wanted to buy at least one of these bound notebooks while I was in Japan. I liked the cover pattern of this one, and the paper inside feels pretty good too. This type of paper and notebook are often intended for calligraphy with brush and ink, so I would hope that it's also fountain pen friendly, but I don't know whether I'll ever actually use it. And not far from my hotel in Kyoto, I stumbled across a paper store. They sold some really awesome decorative printed papers by the sheet. You've probably seen some of them in my previous videos, and they sold a lot of more modern printing papers and cardstock. And I also found this notebook. I don't know much about the paper inside, but the cover grabbed me. Depending on how the light hits it, it changes color. Sometimes it looks red and sometimes it looks blue. I didn't manage to capture the blue in camera. And it often looks somewhere in between. And that was enough to sell it for me. The name of the maker is at the bottom here, Kyoto Kakimoto. Inside, the paper is ivory and feels like a good fountain pen friendly paper, but I haven't tested it yet. And finally, when I bought my bottle of Cantarelli ink from Angers, I also ran across this Muku notebook. This one is an Angers exclusive, just because it has a black cover, as far as I can tell. But in the store, I Google translated the description of the notebook, and this is what it said. Inner paper is made of comic paper with a fluffy texture. I don't really know what that means, but I liked the sound of it. 
and it cost $4 and the paper felt really nice, so I brought it home with me. I like the cloth binding on this thing. It's got a really nice style to it. And that's it, really this time.